Uh, okay, here we are. So first of all, a uh, little disclaimer, I hate hand mics, and I will probably very often use it incorrectly, so please let me know if you can't hear anything or something. Um, uh, like Rene said, I will be talking about content duplication, and um, before we start, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Zbyszko, uh, and I lead the search team at Brainly. Uh, and I will not tell you anything more about me, because there's no time. So. Let's get back to the title. Uh, I have to admit, there's I did uh, deceive you a bit when the title when it comes to the title. The actual one I wanted to use, but I was asked not to. So looks like this. It's, it's kind of rolls of the tongue, right? It's an educational, educational user-generated content application at Brainly. So uh, why I'm doing this? It's actually important. So let's dive into the title and see what it means. First of all, what does it mean at Brainly? Uh, Brainly deals. Uh, Brainly helps students all around the world uh, get help to the places, uh, get help with uh, exercises, uh, questions, tasks they have to perform for, uh, do for school, and uh, that's, that's a basically a community platform. Learners help each other uh, proceed. Uh, they can ask questions. Those questions will be answered by somebody from the community. And it usually happens very often, very quickly, but they can also find those questions. Uh, uh, any questions that were asked, uh, they, uh, they are available in our database. You can search for them, uh, and that's how it basically looks like. Uh, so wh why I am talking right now about content duplication? Uh, first of all, let I will show a few reasons why we want to do this. Uh, they might be relevant to you. Uh, first of all, obviously, it's a, when it comes to user experience, it's a somewhat terrible thing. I mean, uh, as you can see in Brainly, we have uh, the maximal number you'll see of answers here are two. So that's how, I'll, how much we allow for each. So the maximal uh, number of answers you'll see here is two, and that's by design on Brainly. Um, which means if you have duplicates, uh, you are leaving this to user to basically find the right answer. Uh, all, uh, of all of those. And believe me, we don't have like five answers to that question. We have more cl closer to like 500 probably or something like this. Uh, there's, uh, this is unfortunately quite a problem. And we, will, we, we are looking into ways of the duplicating at, at, uh, at the input level, but that is what we have right now quite, uh, quite often. Second of all, I mentioned those answers. And uh, uh, learners coming to Brainly don't really look for questions, they look for answers. So the relevancy of the answer is, is, is what we are striving at. And because we have this like those aggregates of maxim at maximum two uh, answers per question, we sort of make it difficult to find. So and a third point is very important for us is that duplicates tend to hide insight. For example, uh, that's a temperature map taken somewhere. You can imagine that temperature is being uh, measured at a few different places in Poland. They obviously have a different weather patterns in general. For example, it's usually uh, at, uh, across the year, it's uh, usually uh, hotter in Krakow than it is in Gdańsk. Uh, but if you have more, for example, more uh, weather stations in Gdańsk than in Krakow, and you don't know about this, you will get different results here because you will not be able to uh, make uh, make guest decisions about uh, the mean temperature represented by all the stations. And that's a reason for duplication. We can duplicate easily based on the uh, geographical location here, right? And that's the same thing in our case. We want to get more insight out of our data, the engagement um, insight, and so on. OK, so let's talk a bit what does user-generated means. Uh, first of all, let's meet the user. That's our user. There are more of them than this one, obviously. Uh, so our users are usually, uh, usually like most cases, are in high school, in the primary schools, and so on. Uh, bless their hearts, they do not they do not know how to write proper grammatical questions quite often, and they use a di very di very very uh, uh, various amounts of additional words that don't really need to be there. Like, for example, this here. Uh, also, uh, uh, so I had to blur this, but you can guess from the quality here how it looks like. 
super easy to duplicate or even like analyze or something. Uh, or they can input very, very long uh, questions into the database. By the way, uh, those are the, the documents from our database, but they are often, quite often also the, qu the queries we get. So we tend to get multi-line queries, which is somewhat unusual for your standard search, but that's what we have to deal with in general. Okay, so what does ed educational mean? Uh, educational content is difficult uh, to, to process for us, or generally. Uh, it's diverse uh, in the meaning that you will get subjects uh, like uh, mathematical questions, uh, biological, geographical, historical, you name it. And multiply this by different ways all of those uh, subjects are being taught in different countries. You have a, like a lot of different subjects and even the same question can have a different answers depending on the grade where the student is in. So for example, you will answer differently for a first year student than you will answer for like eight year student, right? So uh, it's uh, that's the diversity. And uh, there are very important differences between those two questions. And since uh, learners come here to get a very specific help for a very specific question, it's important to get them right. And uh, the sort of uh, most difficult part of all of this is math. So math is uh, apparently a most difficult subject for, for uh, at least US, if I remember correctly, like uh, l large num uh, the largest subject there is is actually mathematical. And uh, analyzing mathematical uh, questions are, is difficult because, uh, you know, those things contain the same tokens, basically, if you do a standard tokenization, which means that, and there are obviously a very different problems to solve. So, uh, and we have to know this, we have to understand this. So, uh, that's the issues we have. Uh, we knew early on what we need to duplicate the content we already have. We have a huge amount of data, which very valuable answers, and... Uh, the idea was to, pr uh, the reason I'm speaking at this particular place, uh, which is about search, is that uh, we sort of treat the duplication as a search problem. So all the things I just mentioned, those are, uh, the duplication here is basically finding exact matches. What does exact match mean? That's up for debate and we actually change the definition at some point. But we, are, we can tell this all about this later on. So first of all, let's talk about vector versus keywords approach we we took to to find those duplicates in our data set we started with vectors uh, my I, my uh, I think that was because in Brainy there were a lot more machine learning engineers than there were search engineers so obviously you know hammer nail situation uh, but vectors make, make sense because you know the long queries and so on uh, like a test set uh, vector uh, vectors actually might be better for that kind of uh, content so it made sense to to start some with something like this Oh, by the way, so I have to warn you, I use memes in my presentations. I started recently, so they're very unfunny. Uh, I hope it will not distract you. Um, I also like colors, so there will be all of colors. So, okay. First approach we had with the vector search, the uh, vector deduplication. That was quite easy. We just started with some pre-selected content of the curated questions. We basically, the idea is to Go through this. Uh, go through this content, through this data set we selected, and find each for each of those. Find all the duplicates we can find. Uh, you can easily find something like this in your case, like have a most popular questions, for example, and get those, or even have somebody create the content for you. That which happened for us, uh, based on some uh, curriculum, uh, curriculum data. Uh, what we then did was basically do a complete one-to-one -one cosine similarity calculations. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, I mentioned this, but I think she did. Uh, in vectors, generally, what we, uh, what we get is some kind of a similarity. It's a, a similarity calculated in vector space. And quite often, one, one use is used uh, cosine similarity. So that's what we used here. We didn't use anything, any kind of database, any kind of search. We just did a Python script that calculated all of those. Uh, we, found, we selected uh, 0.9 matches. Uh, the biggest one is one, so that's more. You can think about as 90%. That, that's that's not really precisely what that, but it's it's a good intuition, and we got our results. So, I will show two numbers on this. Um, so first, there's a uh, recall and precision. I'm assuming most of you know what recall and precision is. Do you, who knows what recall and precision is? 
Okay, so a quick explanation for, uh, for uh, folks who don't know this. Precision is, uh, is a measure of how many relevant results were returned to the user. So in our case, how many of uh, the found uh, duplicates were actually duplicates of, uh, of the question we were, uh, uh, we were uh, analyzing. And the recall is a measure of uh, providing how many of the actual duplicates from the data set we did manage to get in the query we're doing. And that's basically a value between zero and one. And um, we, s we did strive for precision, but we didn't, did, didn't want to get too low of a recall. So our precision was quite good at point, uh, eight, 85, uh, sorry, 80, 800 uh, percent, sorry, closer to 900 percent, uh, 900. And recall was, uh, as you can see, 0.400. Uh, not the results for the first try, uh, but obviously there were some issues with the, oh, that's broken, sorry. Uh, I was supposed to do it. Uh, first of all, it was super slow. I mean, uh, you can imagine like calculating, there's like m uh, dozens of questions, so, you know, generating text embeddings for them, then, uh, which uh, need to happen, but then actually calculating each one of those, it took forever. And because of all of this, it's also quite computationally expensive. And results, honestly, could be better. So, uh, my original idea for this talk was to present for you with all the approaches we took, uh, but that would take t at least two hours, so I decided not to do that. Instead, I will uh, go with this. I will tell you what we did in the meantime, how, what, what things we did. First of all, when we started, we started a very basic BERT model uh, that we like, we could basically get off the shelf. Um, by off the shelf, I obviously mean open source. And we decided to change that, so we uh, trained our own model based on the uh, available ones. Uh, and the data we have in Brainly, which m made sense for us, since that's not exactly how uh, the general models work. Uh, there are also uh, existing models that allow you to, uh, that are uh, focused on the duplication. For example, Quora has a, uh, one that's very interesting. Uh, I would recommend seeing that, looking into that. We, but we tried many, many of those, like uh, two dozens at least, or something around that number. Many retrainings, many testing the theories. Uh, we, for we also did some uh, data processing since we found out that uh, it actually helps, you know, as especially with maths to like pr uh, start with some with some processing first. And uh, we decided that the approach of doing a manual one-to-one one-to-one uh, uh, calculation was not very good. So we use a Feist uh, index that's uh, sort of uh, similar to what Elasticsearch has now with uh, hierarchical navigable small world graphs. Um, uh, to make this quicker. So, that's our second approach. By second, I mean probably a hundredth approach. Uh, so, we trained the model, uh, created the index, again, used the same data set, and, uh, and searched the in, in, uh, uh, index. Obviously, that was much faster than the previous approach. Again, selected the same matches and got our results. And what are the results? On our t uh, labeled data set, we got improvement, more or less. Uh, precision didn't budge much, and it shouldn't actually, because FICE, what it does, FICE actually uh, will not, shouldn't provide a better results than one-to-one uh, -one cosine similar calculations. It's sort of an approximate algorithm. Uh, so it helps with making things faster, less computationally expensive, but it will not make results better. But other things we tried did at least allow us to precision to stay the same, so stay basically the same. But what did change is that uh, recall uh, uh, spiked like 25% or something, uh, which is better, obviously. Uh, I again broken my animation. Here we go. Uh, first of all, it's better. It's not great, but it's better. Uh, the main issue we had in general with all of this is that it takes a lot of time and a lot of money. And, we'll, and I will have numbers to, to back it up, but uh, generally it doesn't really help. It's not easy to uh, experiment with something, try something new, because it all takes like a, a long time and, and, and costs a lot of money. And also we uh, decided to stop with that for a, for a few weeks and reevaluate our approach. 
So we did stop. Uh, and I will leave this slide for the last of the presentation, sorry for that. Uh, so um, somebody in the company, very smart person, decided to think, what is the type of content we actually have in the database? Like, we know that they're user-generated, I already said that, right? So it's uh, based on education, it's user-generated, and most, they are mostly long queries, so, you know, it all fit. But uh, how this content is actually created, that's another question. Um, next slide, I will show you the most popular query in web search. Uh, I'm not sure if you should have signed the NDA before that, so I asked uh, my lead who's sitting there to make sure that's okay. So the top question, the, the top query we have on web search is this one. It's a single letter V. Can somebody tell me why? Exactly. Uh, and that's the thing. It is user generated, but it also is, uh, it's also based on the curriculum. So in many, many situations, we will get the questions that will be either identical or very, very similar to what, uh, to what users have in their textbooks, uh, uh, exam, exams, and so on. So, like the photo you've seen before, that was basically a photo of the screen of some, of, uh, some quiz and, and so on. By the way, we, we don't allow cheating on brain. There's a code of uh, honor or something on our page. So that's the most popular question. People are cop copying content uh, constantly and uh, actually, uh, first one is a uh, lowercase v and the second one is uh, uppercase v. So I'm guessing one is because somebody forgot to push command or control, second one is because they confused it with shift. Uh, like I said, those are our users. Those, those are learners who want to know answers or help them through some difficult uh, uh, mathematical, for example, uh, questions and so on. So the content actually comes from a very specific source. And even if the questions are very, very long, it doesn't mean that exact matching wouldn't help. So we, did, uh, we, did, uh, we decided to try something else. We decided to go with uh, Elasticsearch, uh, sorry, but yeah, we started with Elasticsearch, but then we switched to OpenSearch because we use AWS. Made sense to, to make the switch at some point. So what we did is we created an open search index out of all our questions. It was a more or less a normal index. We didn't really do much work on it other than uh, providing some same, uh, same defaults when it comes to stop words, uh, some additional fields, maybe some light boosting. Uh, nothing complicated. I see it's like a maybe, maybe two days job. Uh, we did prepare a strict strategy, and by strict I mean that the idea was to find the, the exact matches, and we assumed that in most cases we will get exact matches. Uh, we did uh, come up with a sort of hacky way to have a, a scori scoring that you could uh, normalize. BM25 is obviously not, no you cannot normalize BM25, we did something else, we uh, manipulated BM25 to some degree. Uh, that's because I was working with machine learning engineers, they need to have thresholds, so I provided them with thresholds, and I was very angry I had to do this, but I did. Uh, apparently, that was actually a good idea at some point. Uh, so again, uh, the same, the same, uh, same uh, target content to duplicate. Um, we basically uh, searched all, all the questions through the, through the open search index and got our results. And results, Oh, now you're animating. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay, here you are. I don't know what happened. Um, so those are the results. And the fun part, fun part is they actually are better than our best effort for machine learning, uh, machine for using machine learning and a vector approach. Uh, that wasn't even a goal. And uh, this is uh, only some values I've selected that uh, had the biggest F1, F1 combines recall and precision. Uh, but if we wanted to go more towards the precision, we could easily do that. If we wanted to go uh, more into recall, we could do that as well. It was very easy to manipulate. Uh, and that's the whole point of this I really enjoy is that having this is much simpler, it requires much less work. I mean, uh, indexing the whole index was like maybe two hours or something like this. Checking a new strategy is 15 seconds. Um, so it's all much, much, much easier to experiment. We can like have a much quicker turnovers, test some, like test 15, 50 theories during the day easily, uh, which would have taken probably better part of a decade when we would do be doing this in the previous approach. Uh, 
one thing we didn't account for is that we match incomplete questions this way, which the original model didn't do. Uh, by incomplete questions, I mean that the uh, content we use for the duplication is, is contained in some other question, but there's more content to it. And that happens quite often when users, for example, which they shouldn't because it's in our, uh, in our rules, uh, copy the content that contains more than one, uh, one, for example, mathematical equation or something, more, more tasks to a single exercise. Uh, and that, that's actually quite useful for us. And for, uh, so we didn't really mind that. Uh, but if we want, would have wanted to change that, there are ways of doing this. We can do like a reverse search as well. And actually, we're doing something like this for some use cases. Uh, yeah, let's see. Again. Okay. So the question at this point we had is, uh, can we get better results with machine learning? And I think, and uh, machine learning experts at the company, I know they may be a bit biased, but I tend to believe them, think that we could actually probably get better results with machine learning, with better models and so on. But it will be extremely expensive. Uh, cost of a, sing of a single model training is around $100. And if I, you remember correctly, we did a lot of those. Like, a lot of those. Uh, so it's not 100, it's during the training, it's probably closer to like uh, two, three, four thousand dollars than, uh, than that. And a single match run is about ten dollars, that's not much. Uh, but it uh, still accumulates to thousands of dollars for, for, to get a new version of Matcher uh, out there. Whereas in case of open search, the cost of, of hourly cost of training instances is like, like 50 cents. Uh, so in general, if we want to, for example, tr by training here, obviously I not mean, do not mean training, I mean indexing in this case, we could index in two hours, so it's uh, one dollar. And in peak, when we like, did the whole process of you know, matching questions, it took around, uh, I don't remember the actual hours, but it costs, it costs around $30. So that's probably about 3,000 at least. That's about $30, so a bit cheaper. Um, another aspect that somebody told me about when I was preparing this presentation is that uh, while you can have a DevOps engineer to maintain the Elasticsearch cluster, you don't need a search engineer to do that, but any DevOps will probably do, at least, uh, uh, especially once they uh, go for training. Uh, uh, so that's easy. There are not many uh, machine learning ops people yet. It will probably change, especially with the boom on machine learning. So this slide will not stay true, true to the reality forever, but the things will, uh, the, the, that's the thing, the, the, that's the way that things are right now. Okay, so I've talked a lot about matching educational content, which m might not be super relevant for many of you, so sorry for that. Uh, I did warn Piotr and, uh, that I will be doing that, but there I think there are some takeaways for you as well here. First of all, uh, even if you see that your content is most, are mostly long queries that uh, are user generate, uh, that uh, user type in your search, it's not always the same situation if, uh, when it comes to those concepts are not equal to, to each other. One is a Quora like or Stack Overflow like uh, questions asked when they do actually you know, are very, very free, for free flow. And uh, you can see that, for example, in educational, but for also, for example, quite often in e commerce. Uh, those will be copied from some other place and they will actually be quite susceptible to exact matches. Uh, it's important to also know where to stop. Uh, we decided to go with the elastic matcher and we, we might do some improvements, but we will mostly do them along with some other search problems we'll include. Uh, but um, uh, in our case, that was enough, and uh, that was, it's cool to like, have some target you want to achieve and not optimize further, especially that everything has a, its own cost. For it. And the numbers I showed you before, uh, I think represent this quite well. People tend to, many people tend to jump on the vector search bandwagon, which I think vector search is great for many use cases, but you also need to consider it's in many cases much more expensive than your standard old, you know, your grandmother's uh, elastic search. And this is what I want to leave you. Thank you for, for listening. Yeah, first of all, I would like to uh, make sure that I understand the problem. So you actually didn't want your users to see some duplicates in the search results. Uh, there are multiple reasons we, we've been doing this. That's one of the things. 
but uh, in that particular project, the insight was the point. Uh, okay, so I'm just wondering, why didn't you start with using your already s existing search engine to do exactly the same experiment in the first place, to have like a strong baseline, okay. and then reevaluate with different uh, well approaches? Well, the, the simple answer would be, I wasn't there. Uh, uh, but uh, to put it more, uh, in more perspective, uh, I, that's uh, the situation where we basically had more in, uh, experts in machine learning and we know, and like I said, the initial lo first look, it looks like a problem for vector search, right? I mean, for using vectors because, you know, long queries, you know, user generated. So that sounds like a, like a match, right? So I don't blame people for trying this out, especially they did actually get to some pretty nice results at some point. Uh, it was almost disheartening to, show, to work for three weeks and beat the best results they had. But they, we were working together on this, so the, the, there's no hard, hard feelings between us. So. Okay, thank you. There's one more. It's Bishka, I was wondering, uh, did you do any comparison? Uh, did the two approaches find the same kind of duplicates? Would it make sense to combine them? Uh, answer is, uh, I didn't. Uh, Honestly, I'm not sure if anybody did. It's hard to say. Uh, they will, I mean, b by sheer numbers, they would have to match the same, at least some of the same questions, obviously, because we did a uh, recall over, uh, over half, so some will be definitely much the same. Um, but for others, I, 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 we didn't do that test, actually. Any further questions? Oh, this one. So a quick one, maybe I didn't get that, but you mentioned the case where you had two sentences that look similar, but one is much shorter, which I assume is a subset of the larger question. So which of these did you prefer? I mean, it uh, depends which one I'm deduplicating, if I'm one or the other. The problem was that those uh, queries require you a very, very strict uh, strategy when it comes to search. And uh, that, as probably many of you know, uh, focusing on precision will damage your recall. So. They, that's um, that's one of the classical questions that uh, are actually quite painful to 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 for us. But fortunately, like I said, most of our questions are quite are, are longer than that, and the longer they are, it's easier to 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 get them even with some you know leeways when it comes to strategy. I'm not sure if that will be a question, but uh, I guess I can see your next step in your journey because you started with machine learning approach. You realized that with open search you can have uh, better results and uh, pure open search is uh, to some extent better than previous approaches. So now you can try dense vector types in open search and go back to machine <laughs> learning uh, journey and see how that can improve but stick to open search, right? Uh, actually, the funny thing is we do actually have a vector search engine in, in at Brainy. Um, uh, it was not used for this particular approach. Uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, I'm guessing maybe that the will different. No, uh, the model was a bit different, I know. I, I haven't been there and I know, don't know all the details. Uh, but I wouldn't discount uh, machine learning for the application just yet. I mean, there might be situations we might find out that some cases work better than the others, and we are open to this. Maybe we'll get like 100% of everything, who knows. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, for now, it seems to work uh, for us quite well, but we'll definitely be improving on this. Okay, thank you very much, and another round, uh, round of applause to Spacecraft.